You were watching Wake Up Chicago, weren't you? Oh, I didn't notice. I just turned the TV on. Mm hmm. What's the matter? Well, it appears my wife is a morning news adulterer. I'm not. It's just the forecast is more accurate on Channel 14. So I guess little solidarity is too much to ask? It's just the weather. Yeah. Well, keep in mind my ratings determine my marketability. And if I can't draw the locals, how am I supposed to lure the nation? The same way you have for the last 15 years with that beautiful smile of yours. Well, beautiful smiles are a dime a dozen in this industry. A month ago, I had three national networks scouting me, and not one of them has expressed interest. Not yet. I'm sure you'll hear something soon. Thank you. You okay? Yeah, I'm just a little tired. Well, why don't you take a few days off? It'll be good for you. I'm all right. Just some nights are longer than others. Well, yeah, you're pulling 10-hour shifts at the hospital, and then you're racing home to take care of me and Brian like we're not capable of fending for ourselves. I'm fine, really. Look, Audrey, I know how stubborn you can be, but if the job is becoming too much for you, I need you to be rational enough to let it go, okay? I made a vow to take care of you and Brian, remember? Of course. So let me. We're in a good place financially. You don't have to work so hard. I love what I do. It's my profession. Of course it is. Um, hey, are you going? No, wait. Let me make you lunch first. It's OK. I'll just have Rosie grab me something, OK? Hey. Just take it easy today, OK? I will. Love you. Love you, too. See you later this afternoon, sweetheart. I hope you're nearly done up there. Hello? No, I'm just gonna catch up on some sleep. What are you doing? selfish and immoral and that nothing in this world can justify me selling my child to people and conditions unknown my only hope is that my little boy wherever he is can find it in his heart to forgive me following that interview Valerie Whitaker set out on a national media campaign to find her son. Mom? OJ is good. You sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I was just watching the news. What happened? Um, nothing. When's your next match? Uh, the semifinals are Thursday night. As in tomorrow night? Yeah. I thought I told you to tell me these things at least a week in advance. I thought you knew. How would I know if you hadn't told me? Mom knew about it. Oh, that's how you keep me informed these days, through your mom? I just thought maybe you guys had talked about it. Oh, we haven't. So, do you have work tomorrow night or something? No, I'm scheduled to. You need to start telling me these things sooner. Okay. I mean it, Brian. I don't want to miss another match because you don't care enough to tell me in advance. All right, Mom. Jeez. Sorry.
So your parents put you out of their home at the age of 17 with no other means of support. What you've stated led to a life of drug abuse, alcoholism, even prostitution. But how did you get to the point of actually selling your newborn child? No legitimate reason for it. I was an addict. <laughs> I lived so recklessly at the time. My only concern was my next hit. I would do anything to get it. So several years pass and you pay your debt to society. And now you're referred to as a crusader for missing children. What do you make of that? I never anticipated the outpouring of national support to begin with, so it all sort of came as a surprise to me. So this isn't just some sort of ploy to win the affections of the public? Not at all. The only reason I launched my campaign was to find my son. Nothing more. So tell me, does it ever bother you at all? I can't even imagine how difficult it must be to play such a huge role in reuniting a family with a missing child and still have no success in finding your own. that I will find him. I have to. Can I help you? I'm a private investigator here to pick up some court order documents. Um, do you know who you spoke with? Sure. It's, uh, Gloria Patterson. Okay. Um, give me a moment, please. Miss Patterson? Yeah. There's an investigator here. All right. Sure. Thanks. She'll be right with you. Risa, I presume? Yes. Can I see some identification, please? Sure. Thank you. He's a brilliant young man. It's nothing serious, I hope. Thank you. Sitter has an emergency and there was no one else at the call. It's okay, I got some shut eye. I appreciate it. No problem. Hey, I was gonna ask you tomorrow night, Brian has a match. No worries, I got it. You sure? I'll see you on Friday. Thank you.
mind if I sit here? Go ahead. Thanks. You know, normally I don't like hospital food, but these salads are, they're okay. Didn't expect to see you here so early. I'm sorry, do I know you? Mm-mm. We haven't met. I'm Eric. How are you? Audrey. I know. I've learned quite a bit about you. Have you? Yeah. And from what I gather, you're a good person. But I'm really more concerned with what people don't know. Really? Why is that? This is part of the job. I see. Well, I'm going to get back to work. I know about Brian. Who are you? Private investigator. I was hired by the Whitaker estate to, uh... Whitaker? Who? Valerie Whitaker. Her family. How long have you been following me? Just a few days. Got a call to check out a lead that another detective came across in Boston. What does this have to do with Brian? Brian is Valerie's son. It's got everything to do with him. I've got to go. You know, my job is to provide a client with information so they can move forward. Normally, I would never even be talking to a suspect. But I'm willing to make a conveyance. A conveyance? To avoid a hearing. Otherwise, the estate is going to press charges. I'm going to get back. You know, I don't know whether you heard or not, but she died two nights ago. Reports are saying it was heart complications. No signs of a relapse. They're saying it was stress that caused it. <laughs> stress, of all things, is from what I heard, she was one of the biggest junkies in Boston. But then, I got to thinking, after spending several years searching for a kid who may or may not even be alive, it gives you an idea why her family might think you were the cause of her death. Audrey. Yeah. You've been here since this afternoon. Why don't you go home? I'm fine. I'm just uh, Audrey. a little. Audrey. Audrey, no. go home and get some sleep. We'll be fine. Hey, sweetheart. No, not yet. I know, babe, I haven't forgotten. I just, things got really busy here. And I, babe, I'm gonna make it up to the girls tomorrow. Look, I'm gonna be out of here in about an hour and then I'm gonna come, hello, Deb?
Hey. Hey. You're home early. Yeah. I covered her co-worker this afternoon, so my supervisor let me go early. I got tomorrow night off. Cool. What are you still doing up? I'm just finishing this paper for history class. Anything interesting? Not so much interesting as it is monotonous. History is always repeating itself. You okay? Yeah. I'm just proud of you is all. Thanks. Well, I guess I'm gonna turn in. I love you so much. Love you too, Mom. Don't stay up too late. I won't. Good night. Good night. Did I wake you? No, I wish you had, though. Why? Are you scheduled to be at the hospital this morning? No, I got the day off. Okay, so what's the rush? You know I hate to sleep past seven. Yeah, well, I figured you needed some rest. You seem frazzled. You okay? I'm fine. What are you doing? Getting started on breakfast. It's your morning off. Tell you what, sit down, relax, I'll take care of breakfast. Audrey. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, sweetheart. Breakfast will be ready in a minute. Audrey. Audrey. What? He's got to eat, doesn't he? Grab your things. I'm taking you to breakfast. Come on, let's go. School's in an hour. Bye, Mom. Bye. I don't know what the hell is bothering you, but if you decide you want to talk later, then give me a call. This is Eric. Yeah, yeah, sure. 
but uh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna need a little bit more time. Uh, well, just a day or two, because I want to make sure I got all the info that I did. I... Right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I will bring in everything I have tomorrow. Sure. You want to talk? Where were they when she nearly overdosed that night? I don't know. It doesn't matter at this point. They're not going to stop until he turns up. And the stakes are even higher now that they have reason to believe he's still alive. So what are my choices? Well, you can either give up custody or risk going to trial. I'm not giving them custody. I devoted my whole life to raising him. And you've done a hell of a job, but her family couldn't care less. To them, you're as guilty for buying the kid as she was for selling him, and any court in the country is going to agree. Well, I'm not interested in making any arrangements, and I don't care who these people are. I'm not handing over my son. I hope you realize how ugly this will get for you and your family. Looking forward to Brian's match. We're all very proud of him. Oh, so are we. I'm sure. Also, I've been meaning to call you. Is there something I'd like to talk to you about? Maybe sometime next week? Sure, I can give you a call first thing Monday morning. It's perfect. And best of luck. Thank you. Hey. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the CHSC semifinal regional chess tournament. The winner of tonight's match is going to advance to the championship next month. Good luck, everyone. It's quite a tactician. What are you doing here? you might have changed your mind. Well, I haven't, so please stop following me. I'm trying to help you, Audrey. By tearing my family apart. That's the last thing I want to do. And you, you may not believe me, but I commend you for what you've done. You took Brian out of a bad situation. You made a good life for him. As far as I'm concerned, you're his mother. I'm not arguing that. But you are going about this the wrong way. I mean, yeah. He could lose you forever if you drag this out any longer. Look, he's, he's 15 years old. In three years, he'll be able to make his own decisions. The two of you can pick up right where you left off. Well, look, I gotta submit my evidence by tomorrow, so please don't make this hard on yourself. Do you have any kids? Two daughters. So you know what I'm willing to sacrifice to protect my child. So please leave my family alone. Who's that? Nobody. Were you really that nervous, Mom? No. Your mom was squeezing my hand like a vice. No, I wasn't. Maybe towards the end of the match. Mm -hmm. So when did you know you had him? The minute we sat down. Oh, come on. No, really. He was distracted. I could tell there was something else on his mind other than the match. So you smelled blood from the beginning? Oh. Blood, really, Carrie? It's a chess match, not the Crusades. No, he said he sensed a weakness in his opponent right from the beginning, right? So that's how you felt, right? Honestly, yeah. Oh, you are a piece of work. It's my boy.
Brian still awake? No, he just turned in. It's kind of early for him, isn't it? Well, it might have been all that vanity you served him with dinner that put him over. What can I say? I'm proud of him. I am too, but I'd love to leave a little room for his ego to grow on its own. Well, let him glow it a little bit. He was amazing tonight. I tried calling you earlier today. I was out most of the day during errands when my phone died. Is everything okay? Yeah. Everything's okay. You all right? Yeah. I'm sorry about this morning. Yeah. There was something I wanted to talk to you about, though. What's up? I got a call from KBC Network this morning. They're interested in bringing me on board. Are you serious? Yeah, I mean, nothing's definite yet. And even if something happened, I'd want to discuss it as a family first. Of course, but when will you find out for certain? I'm supposed to fly out to New York Monday for the interview. Oh, that's amazing, honey. I'm so happy for you. So I was thinking it would be great if you came with me, just for the day. You know, we'd fly out in the morning, come back the same night. Sure. Yeah? Of course. I'm sorry I didn't get up in time to make your breakfast. Oh, it's cool. Good morning, you. Good morning. Hey, good morning, boy genius. Good morning, Mom. So listen, I've got a little extra time for work. Would you like to be chauffeured to school? Um, no thanks. I'm gonna catch up with some friends on the way. As Aubrey mentioned, stay in touch with the commoners. Turn it down some, Mom. I'm not even the champ yet. You are to me, so. Have a good day. I love you. Love you. I love you. Love you. What? Blood pressure is pretty high. Have you taken any medication recently? No. Just my insulin. Okay, have you had any problems breathing at all? No. Okay, the doctor will be with you shortly. The patient's blood pressure is extremely high. I'll go check on her. In the meantime, there's a young girl with her foster mother down the hall. She has a cut on her right arm that requires stitching. What concerns me most is that the cut may not have come from a bike accident like she says it did. Michelle? Yes? That's a beautiful name. Thank you. So, I hear you hurt yourself pretty bad on your way to school today. I fell off my bike. I tell her time and time again to slow down but she's always in such a hurry. Well, let me take a look at it, sweetie. Whoops. This is pretty deep. Was there glass on the sidewalk? I don't think so. Do you remember scraping your arm on something sharp before falling? 
She fell off her bike and scratched her arm on the pavement. I already told the doctor that. I'm sorry, Mrs. Brooks, but this isn't a scratch. It's a laceration. The doctor said he could stitch it up. Well, we can. So why don't you go do that so that we can get going and she can get back in school? Sure. Have you ever had stitches before? Once. Really? When was that? Long before she came to stay with me, if that's what you're getting at. I was just trying to make her feel comfortable. I get it. You think this is just another abused child and I'm just another unfit foster mother who's taking advantage of the system. Well, you're wrong. I've given my best to this child, which is a stark difference from what she's used to. But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? This is ridiculous. I'm going to... Where's the doctor? Michelle, I want you to tell me the truth, and I promise you won't get into trouble. What happened to your arm? This didn't come from a fall, did it? Did she hurt you? Believe me, I know you don't want to go back to a home, but you don't deserve this kind of abuse. She's trying to accuse me of hurting my child. I only ask because we have reason to believe that her laceration came from a blade. A blade? You think I cut my child with a blade? I don't know. You're just eager to put another black child in the system. I assure you, Miss Brooks, that's not the case. Like she said, the laceration on her arm does not look like it was caused by her falling from a bike. Well, if you don't believe me, then ask her. Now go on, ask her. Michelle, is there anything you want to tell us? Don't be scared, honey. No. Okay. Well, let's get you all stitched up so you can be on your way. Yes, I need to speak to someone from Child Protective Services. I just need to stitch her up first. We don't have time to sit around here. But if we don't close the wound, it's likely to get infected. And coming up a little bit later, we'll have a full weekend wrap-up on the Cubs games, as well as what's going to happen with the Blackhawks this season. It's been exciting. I love October baseball, and you know they're my favorite team. Well, hopefully this is the year for the World Series. And here's a brief look at today's forecast. Robert? Good morning. Today is going to be a nice one. Sunny with a high of 76 degrees. And I'll have your weekend temperatures later on in the forecast. Thank you, Robert. As the Occupy Wall Street protests continue to expand throughout the country, city officials are looking for ways to disperse the massive crowds without violating civil rights. Guys, thank you. Hey. Hey. Any calls? Your agent called twice. She said it's important you get back to her. I'll call her. Okay. No Excuse problem. me, Carrie Stewart? Yeah. Hi, I'm Eric Reese. I'm an investigator. I was uh, was hoping there was someplace we could sit and talk. You're the man who was at my son's chess match last night. Yeah, yeah, I was there. What's this about? It's about your spouse. I know you're not still moping over what happened this morning. We've seen a lot worse. I just don't understand why they never speak up. You've been around long enough to know how flawed the system is. And for children who've been shipped from place to place like she has, it means a lot to be spoken for, no matter how much she has to suffer for. What's going on? 
The PI who you spoke to last night came to see me at the station today. Do you know what he told me? He told me that my wife illegally purchased our son from his drug addicted mother. It's more complicated than that, Carrie. I want to know the truth! I didn't intend for things to turn out this way. I just wanted to protect him, and that's the only way I know how. What the hell were you thinking? That woman spent the past nine years of her life searching for a child that you've been secretly harboring in our home. Harboring? Harboring? Is that what you think I've been doing for the last 15 years? Harboring him? She was a junkie, Carrie. She would have sold him to anyone for her next fix. She sold him to you! And our family's mad as shit that you never came forward? I swear I didn't know she was looking for him until the other day. That's not good. Why didn't you tell me about this from the beginning? You never gave me a choice. Did you even think about how this was going to affect me? My career? It's going to destroy us. I'm sorry. Don't fucking touch me! I'm still asleep. No. <clears throat> she left. Left where? Mom? I haven't been honest with your mother. Or with you. Everything looks good. This will certainly make the Whitaker family very happy. As for the kid, I'd recommend that he stay in the Stewart home while all this gets sorted out. I mean, it's going to be hard enough for him when this goes public. At all? Yeah. Before you go, is there anything else, maybe some undocumented information that could help us with our client's case? No. It's all there. Now, yeah. As always, great work. We'll be in touch. Talk about it. Her. 
She was only 34 years old. I know. She was just a kid when she had you. I had no idea who my father was. Could have been any one of those creeps she was screwing. Brian. What? I always knew I was adopted. I just never cared to know the details behind it. And I was hoping you never would. I know she was an addict. But I wonder if she ever felt like she was making the best decision for me. I think. I can't say. So what happens now? I don't know. mom earlier. How is she? She said the interview went really well. You should give her a call. I'll get it.
Case number 75314, U.S. District Court of Massachusetts v. Stewart. Case number 75314, U.S. District Court of Massachusetts v. Stewart. Ms. Stewart, is your attorney present? I am, Your Honor. And does your client understand that she's being charged with one count of illegal adoption and one count of child abduction? Yes, she does, Your Honor. And how do you plea? Not guilty, Your Honor. Very well. Your hearing will take place in the Federal District Court of Massachusetts two months from tomorrow. The bond is set in the amount of $500,000. If, in fact, you do decide to post bail, you are prohibited by law to travel outside the state of Illinois. This interdiction will be lifted one week prior to your trial to allow you enough time to transition to the state of Massachusetts, in which your attorney must notify the court before making any arrangements. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Next case, State of Illinois v. Hernandez. What are you doing? Studying. Can I come in? Yeah. We have the court-ordered DNA testing tomorrow. I know, Mom told me. I'm sorry. No big deal. It's just a swap. So, um, what was it like spending a night in the Slimer? Awful. But to tell you the truth, it's not the first time I've been in holding. What'd you do? <laughs> well, some friends and I got in trouble for vandalizing school property. This feminist speaker came to campus and one of the sororities didn't approve, so they had her banned. So you guys trashed their nest? It was more like we tried to burn it down. You burned down their house? No, <laughs> just the shrubbery. The fire department got to it before it could spread. It was a huge mistake, nothing I'm proud of. So, are you worried about the hearing? No, I don't want you to worry about it either. You have a lot of other things to focus on. And we wouldn't want your opponent to think that you're distracted. Mom's pretty pissed at you. She has every right to be. So do you. Just 
getting some linen for the guest room. support for the time being. I'll do what I can to help, but that's all I can give you. Morning. You ready to go? I'm not scheduled to meet Aaron until noon. I think it's best if we went in a different direction for this one. But he's our attorney. Just trust me. You know we love you, but Neil and I can't keep covering your end of the timeshare. That shit's getting too expensive. I know, it's just that alimony is kicking my ass right now. Yeah, well, alimony is a huge bitch to feed. I'm no stranger to it. My first husband was a struggling artist, if you remember. I do. And keep in mind, I laid the litter, too, so. I hear you loud and clear, Blythe. I'll give you a call next week. You do that. And take care. Carrie, it's been years. How you been? Good. <laughs> you look it. Thanks. So, what are you doing here? Aren't you usually on the air about this time? Yeah, I took the morning off. Everything okay? Yeah, Blythe. This is my wife, Audrey. It's nice to meet you, Audrey. Nice to meet you. Why don't you two come on back to my office? That's, uh... It's quite a story. Extremely complicated, it is. And you're not speaking theoretically, I assume. You literally purchased another woman's child. She rescued him. Right. See, here's the thing. Even with the mother's consent, it would be difficult to convince a jury that you rescued him, considering you didn't turn him over to child services to begin with. Every bit of evidence points in favor of the prosecution. I don't even know what the purpose of a hearing would be in a case like this. It wouldn't last more than two or three hours, deliberations and all. So you're saying we don't stand a chance? In hell. I mean, any reputable law firm would be leery of a case like this. You need a damn good one to represent you. I think you're better off settling for a plea bargain. That is, if the prosecution is charitable enough to extend you one. A plea bargain? That's the advice you have for me? It's complicated, Audrey. I understand that, but it's a lot more complicated for me. My family is at stake. I could lose my son. Well, technically he isn't your son. So that's what makes your attempt to hold on to him legally impossible. Do you even know who or where the father is? He'd be next of kin, so by law he'd be Brian's rightful guardian. I mean, it could be any number of men. Possibly, but I don't think you can fight this one. So my advice is to go home, explain everything to the kid, and send him to his grandparents in Boston. And hope for leniency when the judge decides your sentence. Please tell me you didn't know anything about this before you married her. All things considered, your legal guardianship is null and void as well. So what am I supposed to do now? I mean, I spent the last 10 years raising him. I can't afford for her to lose the case either. Oh, I'm sorry, I really am. There's nothing I can do. I know I've developed a rather incautious reputation throughout my career, but even I like to win from time to time. Nothing personal.
you'd be able to help us. I'm sorry. We'll find good representation, though, okay? I promise. Rosie. This one might be worth a try. He was a former supervisor at the U.S. Attorney's Office and specializes in cases like this. When are it to call? Food come yet? No, but it should be here soon. Another voicemail. Hi, this is Carrie Stewart. I'd like to schedule a consultation sometime this week if possible. Please call me at 312-555-7328. Thanks. I thought you were starving. If I take on your case, I'll have to petition the court to represent you pro hack vice since the hearing takes place out of state. However, the court has complete discretion to grant permission or deny it, but I'm confident they'll permit it. You, being the client, of course, will be responsible for all additional costs in the case, that being my travel expenses, lodging expenses, etc. Can I come in? Hey, listen, I'm... Really sorry about being so harsh earlier. It was extremely rude of me. But if you're still interested in my services, I would be more than happy to represent you. Absolutely. But let me warn you, it is going to be a tough one. I know. So we'll get started tomorrow morning in my office, 10 a.m. I'll be there. Is this the food? Oh, hi. Hello. And you are? Brian. So you're what all the fuss is about, huh? I'm just hungry. <sighs> yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. prosecution is going to get a little uglier, okay? So we're going to go through some of the questions they might ask you. Uh, first of all, state your name for the court. Brian Stewart. And how old are you, Brian? Fifteen. And what are your parents' names? Audrey and Carrie. Audrey and Carrie. Audrey and Carrie. Audrey and Carrie. Now those are both female names, aren't they? Yes. Uh -huh. So you don't have a father? No, I do not. No, no father. Have you ever wondered why you don't have a father? What has your mother told you about your father and your mother? Not much I, I have. I didn't want to know. You didn't want to know? Well, has your mother ever told you anything about your birth mother?
How's the family? Good. My husband just retired. My son's finally settling down. He and Joyce Pollock are going to be tying the knot next summer. Ah, congratulations, mother-in-law to be. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow, well, Joyce Pollock, I don't think I've seen her since she was a teenager. Well, she grew up to be a fine young woman. A lot less frumpy than her mother. <laughs> I mean, she's no fashion mogul, but at least she knows how to dress herself. <laughs> you know, I never thought to ask, but how do you two know each other? Oh, come on. I'm a big girl. You honestly want to know? I do. Please don't. I want to know. Carrie, your wife would like to know the dynamics of our relationship. Fine. Blythe was my mentor throughout college. That's it? It's true. However, it's a long story as to how that came to be, considering that I was her father's mistress for several years before that. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm serious. As God is my witness, I fucked that old man through my entire undergrad. Shamelessly, I might add. Well, Professor Stewart was a very handsome man back then. Thank you so much for coming by. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. And you, sir, are a class act. Thanks. Carrie, you still upset with me? Yeah, go to hell, Blythe. Well, <laughs> I'll see you later in the week. Okay, get home safe. Thank you, thanks for everything. Yep, good night. Bye-bye. First and foremost, my family would like to thank all those who supported Valerie in her pursuit to find her son. And although she, she did not live to see that day, our family remained hopeful and vowed to see to it that her work was not in vain. And now I'm happy to say that that day of redemption has finally come. As we were recently informed by our attorneys that after 12 years of searching, Valerie's son, our grandson, has been found. I am not at liberty to discuss his whereabouts, but can assure you we are doing everything we can to bring him home where he belongs. Thank you. I have no more questions. Thank you very much. What did you expect would happen, Audrey? Her father's a former chief justice. She's a national headliner. This isn't the crack whore you treated 15 years ago. She's the fucking Mother Teresa of missing children. And quite frankly, she's more dangerous to us dead than alive. Well, the prosecution is clearly responsible for the media frenzy in front of your home. The fact that you're married to a local celebrity only heightens the tension. So what are we supposed to do? There's nothing you can do. Go home. Get some rest. And prepare for the ugliest battle you'll ever face in your life. And make no mistake, Audrey. They intend to make an example out of you.
the station put me on mandatory leave. Listen, I need to leave immediately. For Boston. Tonight, if possible. Tonight? Well, the hearing's not for another month. Look, I came across some information that I think is going to be very helpful to us. So I need to leave right away. What do you need? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Okay. I'll make the travel arrangements and send them over. All right, good, good. Oh, and, and, and I'm going to need a swab from Brian. Okay, I'll send details of where to go as soon as I get to Boston. Bye. Is everything okay?
The U.S. District Court is now in session. Judge Pilsen presiding. Please be seated. Sixteen years ago, a child, my client's newborn grandson, was illegally purchased by the defendant. And even though the child's mother willingly sold him, this transaction was completely unlawful. So you ask, how is it even possible that the defendant could function as this child's caretaker for so many years? And the answer is forgery. And we will provide irrefutable evidence proving that legal adoption forms were indeed forged by the defendant, which allowed her to function as the child's legal guardian for the past 15 years. Now, throughout this hearing, you'll probably hear stories of Valerie Whitaker's drug abuse and other habits which may have discredited her ability to be a good parent. But keep in mind, this woman who we all know now as the national spokesperson for missing children, rehabilitated her life, paid her debt to society, and set out to find her son. It was the defendant who withheld, not the privilege, but the legal right to reunite Valerie with her son. This hearing has absolutely nothing to do with the defendant's inability to care for this young man. No, no, we are here today to bring restoration to the Whitaker family. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as the prosecution just stated in his rather lengthy soliloquy, my client did indeed purchase the newborn child belonging to Valerie Whitaker. But ironically, it turned out to be for his own good. It sounds ridiculous, I know. But my client, Audrey Stewart, wanted to provide this child with a better life than his drug-addicted mother could. And she did. A very good life, in fact. And no one could have predicted this, not even the great Valerie Whitaker herself, considering that the transaction was anonymous. That's right. Valerie Whitaker had no idea who she was selling her baby to. Could have been a pedophile for all she knew. Luckily, it was my client who took that child in and loved him as her own. After you were hired for this case, where did your investigation begin? At St. Gregory Hospital. It was the last place Valerie had been seen before she returned home a year later. And what sort of information did you come across there? Oh, nothing really. Uh, the staff had changed significantly, so at that point I had to rely heavily on the hospital's records for the information that I needed. Was that helpful to you? Not at the beginning. A lot of the records were rearranged, and some of them appeared to be missing. Missing, you said? That's correct. So what did you do then? I investigated the hospital for another week. And then Valerie requested that I help her with a couple of other investigators on another case. Why was that? Well, her campaign started receiving the attention of a lot of others with similar situations. Nothing quite like hers, but similar in that they were missing children as well. And within those nine years through her campaign, how many families were reunited with their missing children? Seven. Seven? That's remarkable. Yes, it is. I'm damn proud to be a part of it. You should be. So, uh, what caused you to reevaluate Valerie's case? I started to feel guilty. All of us did, because we were helping others find their missing loved ones, and Valerie's son was still out there somewhere. Was she ever bitter about that? No, uh, she was always calling the shots. She often talked about how it was a rewarding experience for her, so you know, I think she felt indebted to her supporters. I made it a priority, though, to see to it that it was just as fulfilling for her as it was for everyone else. So that's when you decided to return to the hospital and continue your investigation? Yeah. 
I uh, was given the records another look through, and I realized that of all the staff that had moved on, the defendant was the only one that relocated. So I discovered a whereabouts, and that's when we reached out to our contact in Chicago. Thank you, Mr. Collins. No further questions, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Collins, uh, for a minute there I thought your statement was reputable. In fact, you dearly escaped cross-examination. But then, uh, you mentioned that in your first investigation at St. Gregory's Hospital, there were documents that had been rearranged or misplaced, correct? Correct. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that I possess the same hospital records that you investigated, am I right? Sure you do. So do you think the prosecution would send me faulty documents? Of course not. Well, the hospital records that I possess are pretty consistent for the last 20 years. So, what's the problem? The problem is that the jury is hanging on your every word. And you're making cryptic statements that incriminate my client. When you suggest that files have been rearranged or misplaced, you made the impression that my client may have been responsible. I never said that. It could have been a hospital error for all I know. Then let the record show that my client had nothing to do with the rearrangement or misplacement of hospital documents. But, as Mr. Collins just implied, it was due to the negligence of St. Gregory Hospital. And see if that doesn't get you a defamation lawsuit. Ob objection, Your Honor. She's embellishing my witness's statements. Sustained. Cut it out, Counselor. And let the record show that nothing in the witness's statement is denigrating to St. Gregory Hospital. No further questions, Your Honor. Any further questions for this witness, Counselor? No further questions, Your Honor. Then we'll break for recess. This hearing will proceed in one hour. Mom. Hey, sweetie. Hi. Hi. How are you holding up in there? Fine. Hey, guys. Hi. Oh, I need to take this. Uh, I'll see you in an hour. Do you want to grab lunch? I don't have much of an appetite. Why don't you guys grab lunch without me? You sure? Yeah, I'll grab something later. I'm fine. See you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. And how long was it before you realized that the signatures on the adoption forms were inauthentic? Right away. The signature that Valerie used to sign all of her documents was different from the signature on the adoption forms. How different? Significantly. The, uh, the defendant signed Valerie's full name on the adoption forms, but Valerie normally just signed her name as V. Witt. How did you confirm this? Several signatures from Valerie, uh, including the signature on the adoption forms, were sent to a local forensic document examiner for analysis. Which proved that the signatures on those adoption forms were indeed fraudulent. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you, Mr. Reese. No further questions, Your Honor. I've always heard that private investigators have the keenest sense of guilt and innocence. I mean, they do the bidding of their employers, regardless. But they always seem to know the truth. Most of the time. And in the seven years that you've worked with the U.S. Attorney's Office, have you ever disagreed with an assignment? None that I can recall. And how many assignments would you say they've given you since working with them? I don't know, uh, over 10, I guess. And with what I've read from your records, you've always recorded the conversations you have with the suspect, correct? The ones that I've talked to, yeah. And how many conversations did you have with my client, Mr. Reese? Three. And why didn't you record those conversations? It was at my discretion, and I chose not to. Fair enough. But you also had a conversation with my client's wife. What was said in that conversation, which you also failed to record. 
I tried to convince Carrie Stewart to surrender Brian to the Whitaker estate. To which she told you to go to hell, I assume. Something like that. Did you not tell my client that if she were willing to surrender her parental rights, she could avoid a setting like this one? I did. But you're not in a position to promise such a thing, are you, Mr. Reese? No. But in your undocumented conversations with my client, you certainly seem to favor my client over your assignment. On the evening of September 23rd, you told my client, and I quote, you took a child out of a bad situation and provided a better life for him. You're his mother, as far as I'm concerned. Did you not say those words, Mr. Reese? Keep in mind you're under oath, Mr. Reese. I did. And isn't that contrary to what your employer believes? Yes. So then it would probably be safe to say you don't always agree with the assignments given you by the U.S. Attorney's Office. Correct. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. And Valerie felt like she was finally making a positive contribution to the world. And you were very proud of her after all she had accomplished for the past 12 years. Absolutely. My only wish is that she were here to witness the discovery of her son. Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Whitaker, please forgive me, but my feet are killing me. Whatever makes you comfortable, Counselor. Thank you. So, after nine years, you finally found him. What took so long? Your client remained anonymous. So we had no trail, no names, nothing to even begin on. He could have been anywhere for all we knew. And after a few years of running around in circles, Valerie started to lose hope. That's when she turned her attention to helping others. That's admirable. My daughter desperately tried to make up for what she'd done. Sure. So when Valerie came home after serving time in prison, what was it that caused you to take her back in? She expressed how sorry she was and her willingness to change for the better. So my wife and I decided to support her endeavors, the campaign in particular. Were there any conditions to your support? Like there were when you threw her out of your home years earlier? Nothing inordinate, but she had to abstain from drug use and adhere to the rules of our home. Well, now I'm a little confused on that, Mr. Whitaker, forgive me, but can you tell me what it was that Valerie actually did at the age of 17 that caused you to put her out of your home? That was nearly 20 years ago. I don't remember. You make your only child leave the comfort of her own home and you don't remember what she did to deserve it? Let's just say that Valerie had issues long before they became public. God forbid any 17-year-old girl have issues. Objection, Your Honor. I don't see what any of this has to do with the case. Overruled. State your point, Counselor. I guess my concern is, is you intend to seek custody of my client's son, correct? We intend to seek custody of our grandson. That is correct. And if by some random act of God you were given custody of Brian Stewart, how do I know you wouldn't throw him out of your home onto the street like you did your own daughter? My family's disciplinary methods are not on the stand, Counselor, and neither for that matter is Valerie. Now, my wife and I are here for one reason and one reason alone, and that is to repair a broken relationship that we had no hand in destroying. Now, my daughter started this campaign in the hope that one day she would reunite with her son, and by God, even in her absence, we intend to finish it.
How long was I out? About three hours. You hungry? You haven't eaten all day, are you sure? What's wrong? I've never seen Bryant that scared before. He was surprised, and I... We all were at the size of the crowd of the, outside that courthouse, you know? But I'm responsible for it. So I've been thinking it, it might be best if you and Brian went back home. We're potential witnesses. And you know Brian can't leave the state until after the hearing. If we win, otherwise he's not going anywhere. I just, I just don't know anymore. I just don't know. Maybe it was all the mistake. No, just calm down, okay? You're overwhelmed. It's gonna be alright. How could I know that I did the right thing for Ryan? Because he's loved so deeply by both of us. I don't want to lose him, Karen. Neither do I, honey. <laughs> hey, there's been a slight change in plans. How? Well, the prosecution doesn't want to drag this thing out any longer than they have to, and they've presented enough evidence to wrap things up today, so Carrie doesn't have to testify. However, they want to cross-examine Brian. Why? I don't know, to find any kinks in your parenting skills, anything that proves you're unfit. Well, I don't think he's ready. I don't think we have much of a choice. Whether he goes up or not, your future is being determined today. Mom, we prepared for this. I'm all right, really. I'll see you at the table in half an hour. You, sir, come with me. You'll be fine. You okay up there? Yes. Good. Obviously, you know why you're here today. Yes. So, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your mother? Is she good at being a mother to start with? Yeah, she's great at it. How so? The fact that she takes so much pride in it. And I know that there isn't anything she wouldn't do for me. Plus, she's a little more intense than other moms I know, so that makes things interesting. How do you mean? Well, she is really supportive, like extremely. Um, she has to be involved in everything I do, which is all right, I guess, but Sometimes I prefer she not be. Sounds like a typical plea of a teenager. So other than being a highly involved, devoted parent, she's pretty great at what she does. Absolutely. When did she tell you about Valerie Whitaker? It was about two months ago. One morning I noticed she'd been crying, so I asked what was wrong. That's when she explained everything. And how did that make you feel? I was kind of angry at first, but then I started to understand why she did it. And today, how do you feel about what she did? I'm grateful for it. No further questions, Your Honor. Before the morning when you learned you had been purchased by the defendant, had you ever heard of Valerie Whitaker? No, sir. In 15 years, did you ever ask the defendant about your biological parents? No, sir. Why not? I just never really thought about it. But surely there must have been a conversation with the defendant about how she became your guardian. Sure. When she told me I was adopted. So you never desired to know more about your biological parents? No, sir. When you learned about your biological mother, did you do any research on your own? Some over the internet. And what did you come across? Mostly television interviews and articles about her campaign. And you do realize her campaign was established to find you. I guess. 
In fact, your grandparents spent a fortune trying to Objection, hire... Objection, Your them. Honor. The Whitaker's campaign expenses have no bearing on this case. Sustained. Keep it relevant, Counselor. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Now, you talked about these video interviews you looked at. Uh, did you notice the resemblance between the two of you? No, sir. I never really noticed. Uh, you do favor her a great deal. And it's unfortunate you only learned about her brief stint of drug abuse. Aside from that, she was a very intelligent woman. In fact, she excelled academically, just like yourself. Did you know that? Yes, sir. Yeah, you have the confidence to say your life was better off without her. I didn't say that. Or didn't you just tell us you were grateful to the defendant for abducting you? Objection, Your Honor. I, I'll rephrase the question. Didn't you just tell us that you were grateful to the defendant for what she had done. Yes, sir. You do realize that you were a part of a transaction, meaning the defendant purchased you like a product in a convenience store. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Answer the question, please. I guess. So, even though you never knew your biological mother at all, you still have the confidence to say your life was better off with the defendant. I'm not sure. No? But you just led us to believe that everything was perfect, right? I mean, I find it a little strange that the defendant didn't tell you about all of this until recently. The way you described her, she sounds honest, forthright. That is your impression of her, is it not? Yes, sir. So why do you think she would wait until the situation became inescapable before revealing the truth? Could it be she's been hiding something from you all along? Objection, Your Honor. The prosecution is leading the witness. Sustained. You need to rephrase, Counselor. Yes, Your Honor. Doesn't it bother you at all? that the defendant forged your mother's signature on those adoption forms? Objection, Your Honor, he's badgering the witness. Fucking asshole. Counselor, approach the bench. You are walking a very fine line. One more outburst like that, and I will hold you in contempt. Do I make myself Perfectly clear? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed, Counselor. No further questions, Your Honor. You may step down. Follow me. Counselor. I'd like to call Audrey Stewart to the stand. And please remain standing. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony of Audrey given this cause now on trial will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes. You may be seated. Would you state your name for the record, please? Audrey Stewart. Mrs. Stewart, how long were you employed as a registered nurse at St. Gregory Hospital? Three years. And will you tell us what happened on the evening of July 17th, 1997? That's the night that Valerie Whitaker was rushed to the emergency room. Was anyone with her? No. According to the medic, the 911 call came from a passerby who found her laying face down on the sidewalk. And to the hospital's knowledge, there was no family, no home, and judging by her appearance, she'd spent some time on the street. And according to hospital records, the pregnancy was discovered as the doctor was preparing her for detox. Yes, 
if he hadn't examined her first, there's a possibility the baby would have died due to complications from the procedure. And what measures were taken at that time? The hospital contacted Human Services right away. And what did Human Services do? What they normally do, I suppose. Uh, background checks and things of that nature. Well, obviously the kid turned out okay. But were there any problems initially after he was born? Other than him being highly sedated, no. But it really was a miracle. The entire hospital staff fell in love with him immediately. And everyone really wanted Valerie to make a full recovery so she could take care of her son. And that appeared to be what she wanted to do. So what was it that caused you to believe she had other intentions? I went to go check on her one night and I overheard a phone call between her and a, a, a pimp, I assume. And they were planning on selling her baby the day she was discharged from the hospital. And child services? They looked into it. But Valerie denied the whole thing. And she had spent more than enough time in the hospital to have made a full recovery without withdrawals. So at that point, there's nothing more child services could do other than let her go and set up a follow-up for a later date. So how did the whole transaction take place? About a week passed and I started to worry about the baby. So I looked at Valerie's private records and I found her number and decided to make an anonymous phone call. And did she pick up right away? Yes. But at first she was very skeptical so I had to assure her I wasn't with any agency and that I just wanted to purchase the child. Did she ever insist on an amount? She wanted $5,000, but I didn't have that kind of money at the time, so I offered her half. And obviously she accepted. Were there any other conditions? Uh, her only condition was that the transaction remain anonymous, which I assured her it would. But for my safety, I insisted that she bring the hospital records and sign adoption forms, which she agreed to. In order to keep the transaction anonymous, what measures did you take? Well, I suggested that she leave the baby at the top of the steps of St. Mark Cathedral, where she could pick up the money and sign the adoption form. So, she left the baby, took the money, and drove away without signing the forms? Yes, but she did leave the original hospital records. So, the only thing you were missing was the signature of Valerie Whitaker. And I knew that in order to provide a proper life for the baby, I had to have those forms signed. No further questions, Your Honor. Mrs. Stewart, I find it very hard to believe that Valerie would leave the child's original birth records and not sign the adoption forms you say you left. Why do you think she would do that? I don't know. She appeared to be in a rush. A rush, huh? Or could it be you never really left any forms for her to sign at all? I never would have agreed to the arrangement if I thought she wasn't going to sign the forms. So in all sincerity, you feel like you did the right thing by forging Valerie's signature to those adoption forms? I had her verbal consent and the original hospital birth records. Okay, uh, so why did you flee Boston and relocate to Chicago? I didn't flee Boston. I left. I went back to Chicago in my original home where I knew I could start over. So it had nothing to do with the fact you had illegally purchased a child in this city? It would have been difficult to raise him here considering everything that had happened. Naturally. But the biggest question still remains, why didn't you come forward after all these years? Hmm? Mrs. Stewart? I didn't know that Valerie was looking for him. So you expect us to believe that after 12 years of televised interviews with Valerie, in including the segment produced by the network your wife is currently employed with, 
But you were completely oblivious to the Whitaker's search for Valerie's son? I didn't know that Valerie was looking for him. All right. So let's go back further than that. After you picked up the baby from the church, why didn't you just take him to child services? Because I didn't trust that he'd be any better off under their provision. But you do realize you were required by law to inform child services in a case like that, correct? As I just said, I didn't trust that he would be any better off in the system. So in other words, you went above the law and made that decision for me. Yes, and I wouldn't do it any differently today. It's a strong statement, Mrs. Stewart, given that every system is imperfect in its own way. I mean, it doesn't work for all children, but it does work for many, wouldn't you agree? I don't believe that any child belongs in a fallible system. So it appears you've developed some contempt for a system and services that that provide assistance for neglected children. Now, why is that? I know that there are people who really do care for neglected children. But as a nurse, I've seen the system fail too many of them. Including yourself, right? You, too, were a product of that system, weren't you, Mrs. Stewart? Yes. And according to your own legal records, you were abused by your foster parents, weren't you? I, I have here a statement that you gave to the Boston police on the evening of March 12, 1985. There's photos, too. <clears throat> Apparently, you had just run away from home after being beat by your foster father. It reads, he hits me all the time every morning when he gets home from work. But if I'm up and ready to go before seven, I can avoid him. And when asked whether your mother permits your father to hit you, you replied, yes, she hits me too. Was that not your statement, Mrs. Stewart? It was. And how old were you at that time? So apparently you've allowed your own experiences to tarnish your perception of the system. Anyone's perception would have been tarnished by my experience. But that has no bearing on my decision to adopt Brian. If I hadn't laid aside my past, I would have been no good to him. Every newborn child deserves a chance, and I knew that I could provide that for that baby. Perhaps, but statistics show that nearly a fourth of all abused children later grow up to abuse their own children. Now, I'm certain that's not the case with you, Mrs. Stewart. Is that a risk the law should willingly take? No. No, I don't think so, Mrs. Stewart. That's why you were required by law, a certified nurse, to inform child services. No further questions, Your Honor. Counselor, would you like the opportunity to redirect your witness? No further questions, Your Honor. All rise. The U.S. District Court is now in session. Judge Wilson presiding. Please be seated. I understand the jury has come to a verdict. Yes, we have, Your Honor. 
Will the defendant please rise? Step forward, please. In the case of the U.S. District of Massachusetts versus Audrey Stewart, the jury finds the defendant not guilty of illegal adoption. And for the second count of child abduction, we find the defendant guilty. Sentencing will be scheduled for one week from today. As for Brian Stewart, he will remain in the state of Massachusetts under the supervision of Child Protective Services until the age of 18, or legal guardianship is attained. This court is adjourned.
wonderful. <laughs> Mom. Um. 